Thank you. All right, if we can do a quick check on whole body listening before we start, I just wanna remind everybody that our ears are listening, our eyes are on the speaker, which is me right now. Hands and feet are down and still. Your brain is thinking about what's being said. Mouth is quiet. And that goes for everybody at home too. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so you guys can see our learn. Um, I can't share my screen for some reason. It says it's been disabled. So you guys can hear our learning target for today. They're second graders and they're doing our math. Just like so. Okay. All right, we're gonna share our screen. And today you will see in your Google Classroom. So again, think about your whole body listening, third graders and others that are visiting us. Voices are up so we can hear. In your Google Classroom, you will see if you are remote after this, you can watch it if you need to. You have a slideshow. So the slideshow, and I think I'm just gonna go to my slides. But you can refer back to this if you need some help. So today as mathematicians, and I'll turn my microphone on, we are going to use, well, let's wait till it pops up. We're going to use multiplication and drawings to represent equal group situations. So yesterday we talked a lot about multiplication and equal groups. We will review in a moment. The reason why we do this is so we can solve real world math problems that involve multiplication and equal groups, which there are many. We're going to do some today. Our success criteria is that you'll be able to write these multiplication equations for the equal groups pictures. We're gonna be able to do some math drawings to help us solve these equal groups word problems, and we're gonna make equal shares drawings to represent equal groups. So we will refer back to that when needed. But first, let's do a quick review. Yesterday we worked on our fives count by. So let's put our fingers up as we go, and I'm gonna show you again how to use this multiplication chart we are looking at our fives, and now it's not working today. Of course, it worked yesterday. Well, that's our next one. Let me get the ink. So looking at the fives, I'll use my cursor to show you until my ink decides to work. Going down vertically, here are the fives, and going across horizontally. And I will enable the ink in a moment, but let's go ahead and do our first finger. One times five is five. five. Two times five, ten. ten. Three times five, four times five, five times five, six times five, seven times five, eight times five, nine times five, ten times five. Now let's just try. Let's do six times five. How can I solve that using the tricks we learned yesterday? Raise your hand if you know. August, how can I do that? Count by five. Count by five, let's all try it. Put six fingers up. You're trying to find the product for six groups of five. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Shake it out. Now let's do eight groups of five. Count with me. Eight times five is? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So just a quick review. Those are our fives count fives. Is there anyone who can tell me what all these numbers are in red going down in the fives column? What are they called? Serene? Starts with a P. If you know at home, put it in the chat box. Okay, anybody have it? The per, 
It is called the product. Let's say it in a deep voice, product. Say it in a high squeaky voice, product. Now whisper it in your mask, product. And then who can tell me what the two numbers are that we're multiplying? It starts with an F. What do we call those, Abby? Close factors. Let's say it in a, um, a bear voice. Factors. Say it in a mouse voice. Factors. Factors. Very good. Okay. So today we're looking at things that come in equal groups. Here are some things that you could use multiplication for. If we had four ATVs, right? We could multiply four times four to find out how many wheels there are. If we were looking at a dozen eggs and we knew we had two dozen eggs, we could say two times 12 because they're equal groups. If I had four pairs of shoes, I could try to find out how many individual shoes I had because they'd be twos. And four times two would give me that product, that number. Fingers on a hand, that's an equal group of five. One, two, three, four, five. If I had six hands, I could say six times five is 30 fingers. And then tricycles have how many wheels? Three. So if I had two tricycles, how many wheels would I have? Six, because two times three would be six. So when we're multiplying, we're looking at equal groups. And that is one of our learning targets today, right? We're thinking about equal groups. Good job, Jensen. You're right. You got it. I saw your chat. Okay, so let's get out of that. It doesn't want to let me out. There we go. X out of that. We're going to get goodbye. So there's also an equal group song to help us remember. Okay, so sometimes we need to draw a picture to help us with equal groups. And that's something we're going to do today. 
So I was just showing you the arrays, but we, we're gonna look at some things that we know come in equal groups. So I want you to get out your math workbook. It's the purple one with the elephant if you are at home. Okay, get out your math workbook. You are gonna turn to page seven. Page seven. And we're gonna look at this together. Oopsie, sorry. We're just gonna talk about equal groups for a minute and what that looks like when we're writing multiplication equations, because that's our success criteria. We're supposed to be able to write these equations when looking at pictures. So I'm gonna put a light on for you. Let's do the right, no, let's do it. Thanks, Ben. So looking at the bananas, what do we have to know first, Sawyer, before we can write a multiplication equation? What do we have to know first? We have to know how many bananas are in each. If you are at home, show me on your fingers. And if you're in the room, show me on your fingers. How many are in each group? What do you think, Cooper? Three. So we have one group of three. Oh, my is still not working. Two groups of three. Sorry. Three groups of three. Four groups of three. So if we know there are four groups of three and the groups are equal, then we know what our multiplication problem might be. If you think you know, give me a thumbs up. Okay, Max, what do you think it would be? 12. 12, can you explain your thinking for me? Four times three equals 12. Because, and why did you have four? Where did you get the four? Four groups of three so one, two, three, four. So the four is the first factor in your equation. And let's use the asterisk today, because we know that can also mean multiplication. We know that there are three bananas in each, and four groups of three equals. If you don't, if you're like, what? I don't know how to do multiplication. Remember from yesterday, multiplication is repeated addition. Three plus three plus three plus three. And if that's blowing your mind, could you just count? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Was Max right? Yes. He was. Nice job. Okay, go ahead and write that problem in your workbook. You should have four times three equals twelve. Yes, Ben? Ten, twenty, thirty. 
So either way you look at that picture, they're right. That's the wonderful thing about math. You can do it so many different ways, get the same answer. Now we've done two together. Here's the question. It's a bicycle, not a tricycle, bicycle. What does bi stand for? Marin. Two, right? Bi, B I. So now we have one group here, two groups, three groups, four groups, five groups to two. Can you write that multiplication equation using whichever symbol you want? You could use the X, you could use the dot, you could use the asterisk. Probably the wrong way. So you're doing the last one on how many wheels? Each bicycle is a group. Looking good. Awesome. So let's count how many are there. How many bicycles? How many? How many? Oh, you ready here? Five times. How many wheels can you All right, Lucas. What would the equation be? How many? Ten. What's the first factor? Show me on your fingers. You should have gotten five, right? Five bikes. One, two, three, four, five bikes. But five sets of how many wheels? How many wheels on each bike? Two. So you have five sets of two, which equals ten. So you could do that two ways because of the commutative property, which we are going to talk about this week. Let's count by twos five times. Ready? Two. Okay. Four. Six. A ten, or let's do five two times. Five ten. Did we get the same thing? Yes, Mrs. Harrison. Can you tell my friends that are at home that I see that they're working hard, so that they get a day when you show me their book or I see their fingers? That would really be helpful. Okay, guys, show fingers or hold up your book for Mrs. Harrison. You guys are doing a great job. They're working hard. I can tell they're working hard. Okay. All right. Oh, so you should have that all written. We're going to move on. Good job. Nice job, Reese. Katie, you doing a good job? You do, Katie. Yay, our friends at home. And Jensen and Henry and Leo. Keep up the good work, kids. Okay, we're going to move on. To our next, sorry, did I miss you? Okay, we're gonna talk about problem solving. If you remember, we said we were going to solve word problems today by doing drawings. Do you guys remember hearing that? It's on our success criteria. Here are some things we are gonna use all year long. And Miss Esther, can you point to that poster above your head? There you go. We have it posted there for in-class learners. In person, it's right here on our on our slideshow. The first thing we want to do is read the problem and we read it carefully. We want to visualize it just like we do when we're reading a book without pictures. Then sometimes you got to retell it, especially as they get harder. Right now we're going to start pretty simple, but as we get more of this knowledge, we are going to make two word, two step word problems, sometimes three. So we're going to have to retell it. And then the fourth Step is to use clues to determine the relationship. Five, model the relationship. That means we are gonna draw a picture today, okay? That's gonna be our model. Six, find the answer, find the unknown. And then seven, this is the hardest one. We gotta reflect, put that answer back into the problem, make sure it makes sense. Because if it doesn't make sense, if it's not reasonable, then it, we're not gonna have the right answer. We're not gonna be making sense of our problem. So. We're going to turn to the next page. I think it's page eight. Can you turn your book for me and see? Um, actually, page eight. At home, turn to the next page. You should be on page eight. Okay, yep. Page, you don't have a page eight? That's bizarre. Yeah, you do. 
Okay, so we're going to practice drawing some pictures for these problems. So we talked about equal groups. I like doing circles and dots. We can do arrays, which we're going to talk more about tomorrow. So let's think of some ways, other ways you might draw pictures. I'll model one for you, and then you'll choose what you like. And Mrs. Harrison, if there's a certain type of drawing you like to do, you can let me know that too. Okay, so I'm going to talk about circles and dots for this one. Sandra bought four bags of lemons. There were six lemons in each bag. How many lemons did she buy in all? Okay, so I just read it. Can you guys visualize bags of lemons? Some people are nodding yes. Some people are not quite sure. So I'm going to just show you bags of lemons to help you visualize. So here we go. Here are some bags of lemons. If you could not visualize that, that's what I mean when I say visualize. You gotta kind of picture it. If you're not doing that, you're just thinking, you're not getting deep enough. You wanna actually kind of act it out in your head, okay? And that's gonna make you successful. So think of those bags of lemons. There are four of those. Each one has six, so I'm retelling right now. That's what I'm doing. I'm going through those steps from before. I need to know how many lemons did she buy in all. So I'm interpreting that as a clue, in all. That means I'm gonna get a total, right? I don't know the total. So I bet when you were in second grade, there was one operation you would use for in all. Mm -hmm. What would you do? Mm -hmm. you add. Yeah, and multiplication is repeated addition. So we could add actually, but we could also, now that you're third graders, so let's draw a picture. You're going to draw with me. I'm going to underline my important information. So I know I have four bags. Let's do four circles for our bag right here on the side. One, two, three, four. Those are going to be my bags of lemons. But I also know there's some more important information. I have six lemons in each bag. We talked about equal groups. So Dave, how many lemons should I put in each of those bags? They have to be six, right? If I had one bag of six, one bag of two, one bag of three, I could only do addition. I couldn't use multiplication. It has to be repeated addition. So I'm going to draw six dots. One, whoops, one, two, three. I'd like you to do the same. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're using a drawing to represent this word problem. Now I can kind of visualize it even more. One, two, three, four. Sandra bought four bags. There were six lemons in each bag. Six, six, plus six, plus six, plus six. Just like Eleanor said, right? That's what we would have done last year. We can find out how many there are in all. We can count them. We could do something fancy. Multiply. So Cooper, I hear you already have the answer. Do you know the uh, multiplication equation? Does anyone want to help them with the multiplication equation? Mrs. Harrison. Uh, Ailey says four times six equals 24. So Haley, I'm hoping you got the four because there's one, two, three, four groups or four bags and the six for the lemons in each bag, the number in each group. There's quite a few of our kiddos, um, group two and two and then 12 plus 12, that's another way we did it. Excellent. So they knew six plus six is 12, six plus six is 12 and then added that to get 24. Yep. You could have counted them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So let me be clear. I don't expect you to know what four times six is. We haven't even gotten to our fours or to our sixes. But do I expect that you can count some dots? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Do I expect that you could probably add these? Yeah, after being in second grade, that was a big goal for you guys to become 
Not musicians, it's in addition. Okay, so with multiplication, you're not doing the same things as you can with addition. The only thing that you know about multiplication and addition, they're related, is that multiplication is repeated addition. So you're not going to take these two factors and add and take away from each other. Okay. Okay, but do does it make sense that six plus six plus six plus six is twenty-four, and that four groups to six? Okay, now I'm gonna teach you something that my son learned the hard way. When he went to middle school, he did not label his answers. He got everything wrong on his test. He came home so upset because every answer, the number was right, but he didn't say 24 what? His teacher marked them all wrong. I know you're only in third grade, but we might as well learn now. How many, what are we talking about? What did he visualize? Lemons. Lemons, go ahead and write it. 24 lemons. Now I have to reflect the one step I always forget. Watch how I do this. Sandra bought four bags of lemons. There were six lemons in each bag. There were 24 lemons in all. Does that make sense? What if I said there were two lemons in all? Would that make sense? No. What if I added those and said there were 10 lemons in all? That should get a red flag in your head, and then you would know, I need to go back and fix that. That doesn't make sense. That's not reasonable. All right. We're going to try. Let's see. I'm looking at my time. Let's try another one. Let's go down to number six. The Fuzzy Friends Pet Store has three rabbit cages. There are five rabbits in each cage. How many rabbits does the store have in all? Okay, I'm gonna retell it. So there's a pet store. It has three rabbit cages. They have five rabbits in each cage. How many rabbits do they have in all? I'm retelling, I'm trying to visualize. It makes me sad, I don't like it. I'm thinking of, of poor rabbits in cages. Rabbits, let's just look at cute rabbits to make me happy. Okay, so we've got some visualization. We know what rabbits look like. Unfortunately, we have to put them in cages. Uh, so we're gonna do it in our heads. We are going to, what could we draw for rabbit cages? What do you think, Insomne? I love it, sure. And are you okay with them doing different pictures? So if you love the circle and dots, you can, but I tend to like to just like visualize it and really trying to understand the problem. I kind of want it to look like that. So if we can, it doesn't have to. You're the mathematician. You, you can figure it out. Harrison always sticks to the dots and the box and the circles because I'm not a great drawer and I don't want to waste a lot of time. So if you are like me, but as long as you have a, you know, as long as you can tell what to draw, that's fine. But here's the other thing. We're not drawing pictures of rabbits. And no. here's why. Mathematicians are efficient. They are not doing art. That's not what we do here. We do that with Miss Monroe. So watch what we're saying. We have three rabbit cages. We're going to do what Cernay said. We're going to draw three squares. We know that there are five rabbits in each. You could even do tally marks if you yeah. wanted. We're going to do the dots. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it looks like a die. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. You have five rabbits in this cage, plus five in this cage, plus five in this cage. I want you to find the answer and write a multiplication equation to go with it. I did on purpose. We are not doing them all. I skipped number five on purpose because of time. We're going to try to get more in today, okay? Or not lesson. <laughs> Maybe not so much in today. Get you independently working. If you know the equation at home, will you type it in to chat? What would the multiplication equation be for this problem? 
We want to know how many rabbits does the store have in all? Don't forget to label it. What are we talking about? Not lemons. All right, Gavin's got a product. Lots of products. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, Finn. How'd they do? They're good answers. They're good products. They need a whole equation. We want the factors too. Okay, can I have you switch some factors around, even though we'll give you the same answer? Three. What would that be if you switched it around, Tim? Three times five equals 15 rabbits. And how did you know that, Finn? Can you explain your thinking? So friends at home, we counted by five three times. 5, 10, 15. That's how he got that. So if you put the five first, you'll still get the same answer, but it's really saying five groups of three. And since we're just learning multiplication, we're going to go ahead and make sure that three comes first because we're looking at three groups of five. Okay. All right, let's move on. I know I'm skipping a lot, but there's a reason for it. There's a lot of material to cover today, and I want to make sure we don't go over. So let's head to the next page. And Eleanor's my helper. Eleanor, what's the next page for you? Is it nine? Okay, so we talked a little bit about using circles and dots, tally marks, squares and dots, whatever floats your boat. Now we're going to talk about equal shares drawing. So this is another tool for your toolkit, for your toolbox. It's just a strategy to help you. You will find what you like the best, but it is a good one. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use an equal shares drawing. I'm going to read this one, and then we'll try one. Mrs. Thomas bought four bags of oranges. Oh, now instead of lemons, let's visualize oranges. Each bag contained five oranges. How many oranges did she buy in all? So we could have done something like this. We're thinking we have one, two, three, four bags of oranges, right? Because that's what the important information says. It says there's five in each. So you can see we're thinking there's one group, two groups, three groups, four groups, four bags with five in each. That's the same thing as saying four times five. But if you were going to do an equal share drawing, you could do it. Start with your five, one group of five, two groups of five, three groups of five, four groups of five. You know you have four groups. Then you could count by five to get your answer. Watch how I do this. Abby, can you come sit on that sticker for me so I can have full body motion? Let's count together, ready? Five, 10, 15, 20. And what's the answer then? 20. And I have how many five? Four groups of five equals 20. That's called an equal shares drawing. We'll do one for these two problems, and I think you'll get the idea. So Ms. Gonzalez bought six boxes of pencils. I know you can visualize that. There were five pencils in each box. How many pencils did she buy in all? So it's the same idea. There are six boxes of five, just like there are four bags of five oranges. So now what I want you to do is I want you to draw six circles with the number five in it with me. You guys ready? Let's do it. There's one circle, five, two, with the five, three, four, I'm going to put one over here because I'm running out of room. Five and six. So in your book, draw six circles, even though it says boxes of pencils. We're going to try doing an equal shares drawing to get the answer for how many pencils did she buy in all. 
For his nine nieces. Uh oh, now I can't see it. Whoopsie. All right, can I read from yours? Mm -hmm. Mr. Franken made lunch for his nine nieces and nephews. He put five carrot sticks on each of their plates. How many carrot sticks did he use in all? Go for it. You're going to need to look for that important information. Hold it up when you have it. You're going to do this one on your own.
So guys, I'm expecting to see the Eagle Care guys come in that soon. I want to see that mountain top. Let's do it. 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 shares in the middle if you're not sure yet. We haven't used a lot of strategy yet. Okay, that's interesting. I would say about half and half. I like the circles and dots myself. It makes more sense, but um, you know, everybody's different. So you'll get to choose what strategy you want. Um, so we're not going to do this page. I put it in here. Today, we are going to get some Think Central time. So, Mrs. Harrison, I didn't know if we wanted to change it or do 1.1. 1 .1. I kind of thought they should do one just to be successful. So, today we are going to, in just a minute, we're going to complete lesson 1.1 1 .1 on our things to do list in Think Central. You are going to go to Jeffco US Bookmarks to get to your Think Central in the upper left hand corner of your Chromebook, and you're going to turn it in when finished. So, I just want to remind you at home that in your Think Central, it's under the bookmarks. It's not gonna be in your Google Classroom assignments. And the kids that are here, we'll help you get in that in just a minute. I did promise that song, um, so I'll play that while you're trying to log in. So if you're in Mrs. Harrison's class, you're gonna go to your Jeffco US bookmarks in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. 
to get logged in to Think Central. If you are in my homeroom, you are going to use social distancing to one at a time get your Chromebook and also log in to Think Central. And then I will go back and play that song for you guys that I promised. While you are working on that. There we go. I know, but we cut it short, so I told you I would do it while you practice logging in. If you are in Think Central, go to your things to do. If you don't have your Chromebook, you need to get your Chromebook. Lucas, do you have your Chromebook? Get your Chromebook. Any questions, um, Mrs. Harrison? We can. I'm gonna.